everybody, Twinkle Fierce here with more discoveries. So, first of all, I wanted to get a couple of things out of the way. One, I'm not going to like, bring you information which I haven't confirmed with the creator beforehand. For example, um, I did confirm with the creator of the game. You can even ask him yourself because he is subscribed to my channel. And he's also commented on, on my videos before. And I've also talked with him up on the game page where you can uh, download the game for yourself and play it. I spoke to him several times. The cat is a male. I'm sorry if you don't like that. I'm sorry if you don't like the fact he's called Sugar. But I'm not going to go telling you he's called otherwise or, you know, giving you his gender wrong. I wanted to confirm before I suddenly get bashed by a lot of people. So I remember before when I was doing Friday Night Freddy's, I... Multiple times got the genders of Bonnie and Chica mixed up, but I now know that it was in reverse. The so Chica is the girl, even though Chica looked different to me, and Bonnie is the boy. But, you know, people can believe what they want. I just thought I'd point that out. Another thing we need to keep in mind before we watch more of my discoveries is the fact that this takes place after Five Nights at Freddy's 1. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 then Five Nights at Freddy's 1, then the, that's where Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the final game, comes in. But the plot of this is not what Scott Coffin wrote, so which means his game might actually be completely different plot-wise. So don't assume that Five Nights at Freddy's 3 is going to have this plot. It might be completely different for all we know. Right. Also, we know for the fact there have been... Three night guards. Jeremy Fitzgerald, I believe that's his name. And he appears in Five Nights at Freddy's 2 all the way up until he gets before the custom night. On the custom night, a guy called Fritz Smith then joins. He's, you know, put to the night shift, where he later gets fired straight after the custom night for tampering with the nanomatrons. And of course, there was a strange odor coming from them. Meaning, obviously. He was the killer. Only the killer could get close enough to the nanomatrons, you know, to stuff them in. And the fact that he actually got caught. Apparently, the guy, we know from the newspaper the guy was arrested the next day, you know, and using a suit and everything like that. But that that still doesn't explain something to me. If I just said Freddy's one, same phone guy as well. We know that it is the phone guy. Right. We know that in Five Nights at Freddy's 1, he gets killed on night 4. He does die. We're assuming he does die. I mean, it's the only explanation. I mean, he literally was screaming on the phone and all you hear is the nanomatrons. So, the newspaper articles were put up before when he must have got, like, arrested. But then they must have released him at some point. Otherwise, they've arrested the wrong person in the newspaper because the killer is definitely the one on the phone. But we know that the night guard at present in Five Nights at Freddy's 1 is Mike. And Mike is still the night guard in Five Nights at Freddy's 3, the fan game. Just for everybody to know, we are as plain as Mike. I, I double checked up on there. I asked the crew as well, we are plain as Mike. Mike has stupidly come back to a job that tried to kill him. Why? I do not know why he came back to a job that tried to kill him. I really don't know why. But he did. He's crazy. We have to worry about Mike's sanity at this point. This, as I said, does not take place at the diner. Somebody said it did take place at the diner, but this does not take place at the diner. This fan game doesn't anyway. I, most likely the finest of Freddy's three, maybe Scott will be in the diner because it's the only part of the story we still don't know why that place closed down. Or I really want to know if the marionette came from it. If the marionette came from the diner. Because it was only confirmed that two children definitely were taken on the newspaper in the wall. It says they believe five children went missing. I believe five, but definitely two went. Which means they did, probably didn't realise there was another one previously. And that's possibly where the marionette is there. I just thought I'd point that out. Now, here's another thing possibly you guys might want to know. The marionette is the type of nanomatron, sort of. It turns out, when I was researching up more about what nanomatrons and everything like that, a nanomatron, of course, has wiring. 
the circuitry used for a nanomatron can also be used in puppetry which it means most likely the marionette is the same. He is a nanomatron. A type of nanomatron, but not with like everything in him. But it is a type of um, nanomatron in sign. Because back in those times, they did use to use the same systems they used for nanomatrons to do like more advanced puppetry. That's why the marionette is much larger and that's why he can go through the rafters and stuff. Because the wiring is all in the ceiling for him. Or her. Most likely it is to him. It looks like a guy. I'm assuming it's a guy. We're sticking with it. It's a guy. Okay. Now. Nanomatrons. What do we know about them? Nanomatrons have inside them an ectoskeleton. An ectoskeleton in a nanomatron is based to act like a living thing. Nanotron is technically um, a robotic version of a living person or animal. They're actually made to be that way. They have their own uh, intelligence in a sense. They're programmed with emotions. They can display anger, sorrow, um, joy, surprise. These guys can express how they feel. Because it's in the nanomatron circuitry and stuff. You can read up about this online about a nanomatron. It makes sense why nanomatrons were used in this game. Because they do express a lot. They can act like, a, like a, um, a living person. They have joints. They have muscles. It's the way they're made. But something else which is very interesting. The veins in a nanomatron are wiring. But... Nanomatrons are controlled using radio signals. They can be controlled long range. You don't need to buy a nanomatron and you can pre-program to do things. And we know for a fact that in Friday Night Freddy's 2 that Mr. Fritz Smith had tampered with them. But he tampered with the wiring. I mean, he could have done anything to them. Nanomatrons uh, do have like a person they are double jointed, they you know got joints where they can move their hands to do things, they can open doors if they program to do so they can grip a door handle if you're not careful. But they can be controlled remotely. It means possibly whoever is controlling the you know, thing is nearby. So my brain is like ticking away now that I learned that. So I was like searching more about the nanomatrons. And during the 19th century they changed them. The way they were done, they were more sophisticated. They could at times actually think for themselves. They could walk around, they could move much more freely. Of course, their eyes are actually supposed to be like acrylic, like acrylic eyes, uh, like um, really fake eyes you could slot in. Because their eyes are completely removable and their teeth can come out. And of course, their um their outer skin is built like a proper skin. It's meant to feel like the real thing when you touch them. This probably isn't relevant, but I should just point out this amazing fact about the nanomatrons. Also makes you kind of worry. So I said they can express emotion. They can express the main emotions of anger, uh, relief, sorrow. They can express emotions and they can sort of understand it, but being, you know, they are. Hmm. But as I said, the puppet is the type of nanomatron that they created. It's the wiring in them. But that still leaves questions. Hmm. Anyway. One thing is definitely for sure, though. The Murph would have had to have a bit of experience with dealing with um, the nanomatrons. Because it's not as easy as just taking off their heads and going inside. There's a lot of stuff in to get a body in there. And if they're actually on at night as well. They couldn't possibly be able to tamper with the nanomatrons at night. I mean, they were up and about during that. And it'd be hard for him to, you know, go from, to go about during the day and then mess with them. So he must have an experience on how to turn them off. So that way you could stuff the kids in. But I might just be overthinking it. Because, you know, it's probably just simple, you know. They probably didn't think of that. It's just simple. Open it up, stick it in. But then again, how would you get them to fit? 
that again would be a very gory part to go into so I, I think I'll just spare everyone you know because we cannot um, you don't need me to tell you how they most likely did get them in there I mean it says liquid you don't need me to point out possible ways of murder The only thing we can hope though is that the children didn't suffer. But then why? Why kill them? Unless it was, you know, a child molester or something. Why trust him? Why the golden fairy? Why not the brown Freddy bear? I mean, honestly, if you're a kid, you have to know your favorite character, right? Because I, when I was little, my mother, there was a particular horse I wanted for Christmas, a Nibbles horse. And there was two of them. I wanted the light-colored one. And my mother got me the dark brown when I wasn't happy with it. But you, as a child, you would know which one you like. Do they know Golden Freddy? Is that why they want to create a Golden Freddy? But then why were kids out at night? Damn it! <laughs> it's annoying. But I thought I'd just like get all that out of the way for you guys to understand about the nanotrons. That they are built to be like humans. Uh, they're meant to display humanish emotions. That it is in them and you can program to do things. But obviously that's not the case here. It would make sense why the children get attached onto the nanotrons. They are a lot like a person. And obviously a part of them was in them. But why attack? From everything I read up about spirits. Trust me, I've gone into every single possibility and plot here and every single theory and scientific fact trying to riddle all this out. Just in case we miss something. A good spirit would um, sometimes give you hallucinations trying to get you to figure out what has happened to them they give you hints that they want you to solve but they're trying to kill you which would have hint a violent spirit that they want you to become like them but that's not right don't that was like another theory completely mm -hmm. golden freddy freddy falls bear foxy the pirate bonnie the bunny chica the chicken and the marionette Marionette, marionette. Marionette. You can see it everywhere. They used to walk around during the day. Did that mean the marionette used to as well? We know the toy version to walk around. We know the marionette can move. Was he from the diner? And yes, guys, the reason why I'm not bringing the cat into this is because technically Friday Nights of Freddy's 1 and 2, the cat is not present in this. The cat is present in this, but I really don't know why the cat is in this one. What's kiddo got to do with anything? But again, in this version of Friday Nights of Freddy's 3, the fan game, the marionette is attacking the nanomatrons. Again, the creator pointed that out. The, the marionette is the one attacking the nanomatrons. But why would the why would the puppet attack the nanomatron? Wait, they've been fitted now, haven't they? In this fan game version, the guy in the phone says they've been fitted with new technology to stop them attacking um, adults to make them friendly. Maybe the marion the marionette is trying to get the stuff out of them because it wasn't in them originally. It's trying to help them, maybe? Because if we're going with the theory that it's the sixth trial and the sixth trial, you know, has brought them into these things so that way they can, you know, be saved. Somehow, you know, have revenge or stop the killer from killing again. But if they got a safety mechanism in them, they wouldn't attack us. But they attack us once a part of them comes off. Because they're able to think again for themselves. If that's what's going on in night one. 
because as soon as the marionette gets out of the box, there's a flashing light up near Bonnie, Freddy and Chica. And then, after that happens, we then see Bonnie starts moving. But then Bonnie starts losing pieces of him. Till he's up where we are and then he can attack us. Is that why the marionette is attacking them? So it's not until they lose a piece of themselves that they start attacking. Because they're clearly not pulling... Are they pulling each other apart as well? He says Stephanie, the marionette attacks them first. He doesn't attack you first. Why not us? Why not go straight for us? 